I think the wildest phenomenon I've ever experienced in collecting Japanese video games is the Japanese localization for a popular American movie. And here we've got the game for the Super Nintendo Batman Forever, and it's clocking in at nearly $75. This is actually a phenomenon you'll see all over the place. Um, if we go down here, we've got True Lies. This is going out of the box. Just the cartridge by itself is going for about $35 for True Lies of all games. And the reason a lot of these games, like look, Aliens vs. Predator, although that wasn't a movie, but it's still, you know, based on a franchise. We've got Ghostbusters 2 going for about $48. Is because in Japan, you know, American movies are pretty popular. Um, but the games get these very limited releases. And so now that people are trying to collect, you know, every Super Famicom game, every Famicom game, these limited release games are getting super expensive. Like I think for Judge Dredd, for the Mega Drive, I think that's like a $200, $300 game here in Japan or in America because it was so printed because it was, you know, it was a tie-in game. So that's like, what, a $30, $40 game at most? Oh my god, wow, all the lights. That's something that's killing me about this location uh, that I haven't even mentioned. Hey, it's uh, <laughs> kind of got too into my story there. Uh, it's your man in Japan, Jay Contra. I'm here in my old stomping ground, the Hard Off in Saga, Saga City, Saga Prefecture, on the island of Kyushu in the south of Japan. I used to come here quite frequently when I used to live nearby. I used to live about an hour and a half from here, but so always kind of stop in, especially if I had to come in for a meeting or something. Um, and it's, you know, this is actually, it's definitely, the selection has definitely improved over the five years, weirdly enough, whereas you see a lot of games, you see a lot of stores, like, you know, like just where I was before it, um, in Omuta, the selection has kind of gone down. There's Terranigma going for 30 bucks. The selection's gone down over the last few years. But weirdly enough, Saga's, Saga's gone up in the last, you know, oh my god, almost six years that I've been coming here now. There's a lot of, there's a really, there's a lot of cool games here. It's actually really, yeah, Tenchio Kurao. Um, oh, I forgot what the English name for that was. Um, but lots of, lots of great games here. De Decent-ish prices. Wish it was a little cheaper, but that's, I always wish it was a little bit cheaper. Here's a bunch of, well, well, a lot of loose Genesis games. Going for real cheap. Here's WrestleBall. Let's play a good game of WrestleBall. I think, oh yeah, oh yeah, they do have some Mega Drive, some box Mega Drive games. Dino Land. Oh, for 10 bucks. Wow. There used to be a, uh, they used to have a, um, a 32X here, which I should have bought. It would have been a lot cheaper if I bought it here instead of like going for the one in Japan, for the one in Tokyo, excuse me. And, wow, oh, they even have a good one. There's an MSX uh, Go game. Do you have anything else? See, here's, here's 32X Racing Game VR Deluxe. And then here's the um, the lone PC FX game. <laughs> Put out by NAC itself. I'm, I guess it's some kind of fleet combat game. Looks like, looks pretty strategic, I want to say. The, the interesting number, wow, an interesting number of Virtual Boy games. Here's the Bomberman game. This is going for about eight bucks. It's not bad. They got the golf game. Then we got, oh, it's cool. I think this is a good shooting game. I think I have this. Just haven't had a, I haven't played it yet. Oh, Red Alarm. There it is. And then there's um, Mario's. It's not Mario Tennis. It's Mario's Tennis. Much like Diddy's Conquest. And this is all out of a very clamshell Famicom game. Fascinating. It's crazy, and we got a bunch of a bunch of Famicom disc games. Quite a variety in this Saga hard off. Like Saga, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's you know not a lot of people live in Saga. There's not a lot going on here, but somehow, just over the years, maybe just because I'm the only one insane to buy, it's insane enough to buy a lot of this stuff. Um, I guess they just managed to keep a whole lot of different systems here. There's a couple games I've been interested in, like, oh yes, um, like Yoshi's Road Hunting. Um, if you can tell, this is something that's really been kind of 
messing with my head is that there's a clear difference in the coloration between the front of the box, which is this kind of nice orange, and the top, which has gone yellow. It might be hard to see um, through the iPhone that I'm using to shoot this, but what's been happening is, and I've been saying this a lot recently, is because these games have just, you know, sat here for years underneath harsh um, fluorescent lights, you've got the tops of a lot of these games um, just bleaching, although it doesn't look like it's happened to this uh, this copy of Star Fox here that's going for seven dollars. It's not bad. Not bad. Oh yeah, no, she's road hunting, if you couldn't tell. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, there is a, it's a Super Scope game. It's actually, it looks really cool and I think it'd be fun to play. It's only like five bucks. It's like whatever. I can, I can afford five bucks for a game, although I do wish the top was in better condition. Man, here's Diddy's Conquest, although in, in Japanese, it's, so it's Super Donkey Kong 2, Dixie and Diddy. That's so weird, aren't they? <laughs> All right, I guess they're giving Di uh, Dixie top billing, so be it. And here's Bomberman 2, didn't, isn't, am I insane or is the American version of this worth like, like 50 or like 50 plus dollars? But here in Japan, it's worth just 10. Then you may remember the guy who uh, made Earthbound, Mother Zero, perhaps even. Uh, this is Shigesato Itoi no Basutsuri number one. This is a, a game that came out for the Satello View, I think. It was something, it was some game that was released for the Super Nintendo originally. I think, or it might have been for the Nintendo Power, that system of. Um, it was for the Super Nintendo, I think, and they, it was you couldn't really buy it, but then they re-released it for the N64. They might have, like, H, like the equivalent of HDifying something uh, back in the late 90s. I don't know, but that's... To play that right there, we've also got Mario Party 2 complete in the box for eight whole dollars. That's insane. That's crazy. Like, in Japan, that's actually maybe a little bit expensive. You maybe only would want to pay five dollars for that. But here's Smash Bros. Remember, this, this is actually, a lot of N64 stuff has gone down in price. <laughs> like, Smash Brothers used to be like a $30, $25 game. It's got, it's got a, apparently a few scuffs on it, but here's a complete inbox copy just going for 19 whole dollars. You even got Puzzle, like Puzzle Bobble is worth more than Smash Brothers. That's just, I complain about Japan a lot, but all of those complaints are baseless simply because a lot of these games are so much cheaper. And something I've been wanting to get into recently is um, GameCube, because no one else seems to be getting into GameCube quite yet. And for some reason, this is a $30 GameCube game. You don't see too much of those. It's a Pokemon. I'm guessing it's a Pokemon Stadium game. Although I'm not super familiar. I'm not super familiar with a lot of the Pokemon games, and I'm especially not familiar with Japanese GameCube games in general. Although this looks like a really cool one. This is um, Dobutsu Bancho. This is, I believe this only came out in Japan, although I could be wrong because I don't know much of the library. But this looks like a really cool, like, kind of Minecraft before there was Minecraft. Everything's QB playing off of the oh, oh, GameCube aesthetic, which is really cool. And then here's the, I assume this is the Thousand Year Door, although for some reason, a lot of, I find a lot of GameCube games that don't have the manuals, which drives me nuts, and that's why this is only $20. And for some reason, all of the copies of Thousand Year Door in Japanese that I find are really beat up. <laughs> Well, this one, that was actually pretty good. And then there's Donkey Kong. And we'll get into Donkey Kong a little bit later when we head over to the junk section. But even Fantasy Star Online, for some reason, is still like a $20 game. Even though, maybe it's, if it still has the memory card with it, it might be worth $20. But like, who's playing Fantasy Star Online anymore? Who's doing that? I think they even had... Oh, uh, where was it? Oh yeah, back there. One of the more expensive... Uh, GameCube games in Japan is Rogue Squadron 2. <laughs> I mean, it's a good game, and I really want to pick it up, although $20, like $30. Oh, and then there's the, the Lord of the Rings RPG game. I remember picking that up when I was, I remember renting it from Blockbuster when I was a kid and having some fun with that, so I definitely really would like to play that. And they even have Fantasy Star Online Episode 3, and for some reason it's only 5 bucks. Like, why is Episode 3 5 bucks? But then you've got episode one going for like episodes one, uh, one and two. I guess two games in one. Maybe, maybe that's the rationale. Oh, and of course the coup de gras. Here's Majora's Mask going for a mere five dollars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we just look through all the games. We're gonna skip the consoles. We don't have time for that. Let me just say that they actually do maintain. A, they had a lot of Wii's here in the box. They had a couple GameCubes in the box. But really, I would love to show off 
I want to show off the junk section, which is actually really impressive for a place like Saga, where you think they'd have nothing. They actually have a huge junk section, because instead of going to the normal consoles, what we'll do is we'll go back here to the junk consoles, and it's just everything. Actually, a couple years ago, I managed to pick up a Neo Geo CDZ in the box. Of, no manual, unfortunately, but it did have an extra controller. The only problem is that it was in the junk and it did not have a laser that worked. But boom, just buy a $20 laser, fix it up, and then beautiful CDZ. This place really surprises me. This is where I picked up a Twin Famicom um, when I first got here. Oh, it's, it's pretty wild. They got a lot of stuff here. Oh, I guess someone... Is it I moved it? Oh yeah, they had a, a, a Capcom fight stick. Although it doesn't have the interior button, the, like, you know, the interior styrofoam, so that worries me. I don't know why someone would get rid of the interior styrofoam and then just, you know, keep the box, but whatever. And so what I mentioned about Donkey Kongo was that a lot of the, a lot of times you'll go, you'll go into, you'll go into what I like to call the, the, um, the Wii, the Wii balance board. You can see a couple down there, the Wii Fit balance board and the Donkey Konga graveyard. And this is definitely what this place has become. We've got a lot, and the um, oh yeah, the Tycho Drum Master game. You find oh my god, so many of those peripherals here. And Japan also didn't really seem to adopt. Um, well, I guess you know I was gonna say Japan wasn't really a country that did Guitar Hero, but that's because Konami had you know this guitar game way before Guitar Hero came out. And I guess that fad passed over before it came out uh, in the United States. So we got a couple of guitars here, and then I actually noticed they had a Guitar Hero. They had the, um, <laughs> the Legends of Rock from the 360 box. It's going for uh, 10 bucks. Oh my god, I remember when that was all the rage back in high school and college. Of course, I'm dating myself by saying that because I'm an old. Then what I like to do is sometimes I like to play the uh, expansion pack game. Don't have, not, don't have time for that now, but just if you find a bunch of N64s and they still got the cape with the tops on them, you might be able to get a deal because these are only going for like five bucks, whereas expansion packs uh, for the RAM, they're usually like, they can even get up to $20 sometimes. So that can be a, a fun game to play uh, when you have no life like I do. That's uh, just out of these like gross Famicoms. If there was just a way to safely de-yellow these, like I think there's a big problem with um, when you use that like chemical solution, the retro bright, you end up making your console more brittle because you're just stripping when you put it into that retro bright, you're stripping off the top layer of the plastic and that really, that unsettles me. But I guess when you've got so many, like so what if you end up breaking a Super Famicom, there's just going to be so many more. Especially in a place like this where you can get them for like three dollars a pop. Like, I, I would also, you know, I wonder if I could just, you know, talk, maybe <laughs> make sure it's okay with the clerks. But I would love to start popping these open and see if I, like, seeing if I could find a, a one chip uh, Super Famicom. Because I'm pretty sure it wasn't just SNESs that were one chip, right? Like, I'm pretty sure Super Famicoms are one chip as well. Well, you know, certain ones are at the very least. Like, here's oh, man, a PSX. This is crazy. This is like a DVR. I would love to get one of these in the box. You find these all over the place just because nobody wants, like, wants a, who wants a DVR anymore? Like, who's using a DVR? <laughs> you know, wow, Wii U in the junk section. I never would have thought I would see the day where the Wii U was put into the junk section. That's because, look up here, you can buy Wii U in the box for $70, um, and it's so it can play games, but the gamepad yeah, apparently the backlight's kind of wonky on it. Like, it still works, it's just the backlight's the problem. And I don't even know. Like, that's, I think, going to be a huge problem for the Wii U and the Wii U collecting in the future is those freaking game pads. Because you can't operate the Wii U without it. Like, someone, I hope, I hope someone figures out how to, uh, how to, how to use the Wii U without the game pad. Because that's just going to be a big problem come, like, ten years from now. Because that was, like, the, that was the break point. Wasn't it? <laughs> Am I insane for thinking that? So let's go over to the games. Let's round it up here. We're going to the... We're going in, like... It's just so much. GameCube. I don't know what happened. But I'm guessing you might have seen all of those GameCube bricks. And uh, the junk section. And then here's just all of the power cords. Super interesting. Lots of... Uh, of N64 power bricks. I just wish those working in America. 
because then you'd have all of these uh, things you could probably just end up shipping over and making some money on instead of using those like third-party power bricks. I don't trust third-party party power bricks. And Japan has so many, but because the voltage is different. Like in Japan, let's see, let's double check. If you'll indulge me for a moment, we go here, look at here, because America's on 120, right? So here we go, here's the input, AC 100. So you, like you, pr I wonder if you could use this in America. You're probably gonna end up frying the brick faster, but um, you could, I guess, theoretically use this in America, but uh, if only they took 120, if only, I don't know if it's, I'm guessing it's more expensive if you have that voltage range. Like, the what's great about PlayStation 2 voltage adapters, let's see if we can find one. Well, the thing about the PS2 is that it can run like it, like 100 to like 240. It's really great, and that's why you can use uh, PS2 cables worldwide, I believe. I don't see any, there's gotta be, well, you know, we'll test the theory once we get to it, but. I think maybe the crown jewel, if I could, my mother load would be if I could find some freaking GameCube component cables in here, but I don't know if I'll ever find them in the junk. And here's the uh, Famicom uh, compot, uh, is it coax box. Oh, jeez. So much stuff. Just, oh my god. That, like, this is, it's just a graveyard. It's just PlayStation AV cables. Like, no one's ever going to want these. Like, when is anyone. This, this box is just going to be here forever. Like, the, the apocalypse is going to happen. Zombies are going to be raining across the country and the world. And no matter how many guns, no matter how many Sega Saturn leg guns you find, to try and stop them zombies, you're just going to have... And just, you're going to have that. And then it's like, there's just so many boxes. So many boxes. Okay. And, oh yeah, this was interesting. Um, for some reason, there's just a... Uh, a white, an original uh, PC Engine controller here going for $3. It's a bit beat up, a bit scuffed. But yeah, just, just here. Oh, eh. <laughs> Who needs it? <laughs> so many controllers and these. Um, it's a bit sketch. It's no problem with a lot. Two, oh, two bucks for a PlayStation 2 controller? Oh man, that might be a risk we're taking. Seems everything seems okay. I did buy a PS2 controller from the junk once. And it had a, a sticky right button. This, this seemed okay. It's like two dollars, so it's like, what's the worst that could happen? Mm. Anything else? Let's see. We only got a couple a minute or so left. Oh, there's that's a Konami. Is this Beat Mania? Is that? Am I forgetting that name? Yeah. But this is a huge. This is in the same junk section. So I'm going to end with a pan. The huge junk section. We've got PlayStation. PlayStation 2 games over there, PlayStation 1 games down there, there's a bunch of PSP games over there, we've even got some probably GameCube games, Sega Saturn is a huge junk section, so if you're in Saga, I don't know why you would ever come to Saga, but if you do, you should definitely check out the hard off here. This has been your man in Japan, Jay Contra, saying thanks for watching, see you next time, and mahalo.